Okay, sorry about that. The phone rang. So, like I say, he said he wanted to go to California to become a recording artist, and he wanted me to go with him as his drummer. Now, I was 14, and I didn't have a drum set, and my parents wouldn't let me go. So he went off to California, and then apparently his parents sold the store, or they died and they sold the store, and when he came back to Brooklyn, he came back and lived in Sheepshead Bay, and he went to Erasmus High School for a while. He never saw him again. But uh, the reason I bring up these two guys is just because I think it's funny because uh, I was telling you earlier that I saw a commercial for a sitcom coming on in the fall. And I used to sell tickets to Broadway plays in Manhattan. And uh, there was a play that won an Emmy uh, quite a few years back. It was called La Cage à Fall. I don't know if you saw it or know about it. I didn't see it. It was a gay play. <laughs> it was written by Harvey Firestein. Harvey was the guy in the first row in the first seat in my Hebrew school class. And now he's in the sitcom coming up in the fall. He's the guy with the hoarse throat. You know who he is from his voice. Harvey Firestein. And I'll tell you something. When he was younger, his name was Firenstein. And we had problems pronouncing it, so he shortened it. That's how I know it was him. Okay. You know who the other guy was? Or is? I haven't got in touch with him. But I got in touch with Harvey. The other guy is Neil Diamond. You watch the jazz singer, and you see that whole story is exactly what I told you. He grew up in Brooklyn, next to a shul, a uh, synagogue. His parents, his father was a cantor. He went off to California. I wasn't mentioned because I didn't go with him. <laughs> I didn't have a drum set. But he came back, they went to another school, he uh, went back to California and became famous. That's Arthur Jackness. I know from the voice and I know from the song that I picked when I picked the song off his bed and said, play this, it was Cherry Cherry. I was the very first person to hear that song. Besides his parents, obviously, before it became famous, he had a shitload. Of, excuse me, he had a, a lot of songs on his bed, and I picked Cherry Cherry, and I said, "Play this one for me." I remember that incident from childhood. I was fourteen, so just wanted to blow your mind there. My brother's an actor, by the way. I'm not telling you who he is. But uh, he's not that famous. But he is, uh, he's, he's won some awards. I'll put it that way. Uh, hey, <laughs> you never know who you're going to meet when, you, when you're young and you grow old and you look back. And you say, why didn't I do this? Why didn't I do that? You know, all my friends went to Woodstock. My mother wouldn't let me go. I couldn't go. I would have loved it. But I would have came back. I don't know. I might have been all tripped out. <laughs> Who knows? Uh... You never know. When you're young, take advantage of it because when you're older, all you have is memories. And I am going to write a song about memories. And uh, I was thinking about that this morning. So I wanted to talk to you about that. 
I hope you enjoyed my stories. And if you are listening, uh, Neil or uh, Harvey, go ahead and email me, storenor94 at yahoo.com. I don't check Facebook. I don't check Twitter. So if you're trying to get in touch with me there, you're, you're wasting your time. you got to email me, storenor, S-T-O-R-N-O-R 94 at yahoo.com. I check my email only every single day. Everyone have a great day, and I'll be back with some music next time you see me. Take care. Hope you enjoyed that.